Hey guys, it's Tamron here doing what I love and welcome back to another episode of the Man to Man Coverage Podcast with my good friend and co-host Ben. Hey guys, how's it going? And we are here with another episode and with the end of the season coming up, I thought it would be fitting to discuss and kind of review and grade some of these big free agent and trade moves that happened during this previous offseason, we'll also cover Mitchell Trubisky and some other topics. So starting off with these free agent moves, this past offseason, um, we had a lot, a lot of new players on different teams. And the first one we'll be talking about is Philip Rivers to the Indianapolis Colts. I think it's fair to say that both of us are pretty big Philip Rivers fans. Um, I feel like Ben more so than me. Yeah. And people were kind of trashing on Rivers um, in, his, uh, in his treasure days. And I just thought the Colts were a great fit for him. He gets a good offensive line, great coaching staff. He has some good weapons. And I think he's been fine there. I think that at times a lot of those mistakes are still in him. I think it's just because he was so used to that, the Chargers playing hero ball, if you will. And I say if he went to the Colts around 2015-16, he would have probably played a bit better, but he's just so far into his career that a lot of the mistakes are still there. I mean, he's getting protection. He's had some nice throws. His arm looks a bit weak. I would go like a B plus. Um, I mean, the Colts are a competitive team with a good defense. I wouldn't call Rivers a game manager, but he's done enough to win the Colts some nice games like the Packers game comes to mind. Um, however, I think he would uh, I thought he would have been doing a bit better, but overall, I think he's done fine with the Colts. I don't know if they're a Super Bowl team, but I think they'll remain competitive, and I think that was why they brought him in. Um, yeah, I agree with a lot of what you said. Uh, you know, like the first four weeks of the season, I was like, oh, no, this has turned into an absolute disaster. But uh, I think that was just the, the short off season, new teammates, uh, new system. But I think since then he's played, he's played good, but not like super exceptional. And I think that has to do with his age a little bit. But I think overall the, the Colts are still uh, – I, I think they could still probably be a dark horse Super Bowl contender. Um, it's really just you got to get through the Chiefs right now in the AFC. If they were an NFC team, I think they'd have a much better chance of being in the Super Bowl. But, um, yeah, I I still like this move. I think it's an upgrade from uh, what they had last year with Brissett and uh, Brian Hoyer. Um, well, I mean, that's not hard to upgrade from, but uh, – <laughs> I think he's been a nice addition there, and I think he's cut back on some of his bad interceptions. And the Colts have had a they've had a nice run here recently. So, you know, I think they'll keep that up going into the playoffs. Yeah, I actually liked Brissett last year. The first five weeks, he was really good. I actually had him as a dark horse MVP candidate, and then he just fell off a cliff. Yeah, well, that's because he injured his knee, and then after that, it was just ugh. Yeah, one thing about Brissett, he was athletic, but I thought his decision-making was a bit off. So I think Rivers, you do get a better decision-maker with him in that move. I think he's ultimately a better player in terms of that. Um, I think it's been a move that's worked out pretty good. Um, So, yeah, the next player we have is Tom Brady to the Tampa Bay Buccaneers. Um, This was a big move. I was excited about it. Ben, I don't know if you were. Um, I remember you were always kind of against, not against the fact, but you didn't believe Brady was going somewhere else. And then we thought he was maybe going to the Raiders or the Chargers. And then he ended up going to the Buccaneers, which overall, I like the move a good amount. I think it's worked out pretty good. Um, I don't think he's been as great as people would have hoped. It seems like there's a weekly basis of about two to three times of Brady not connecting with his players. I I feel like that they, you know, him and Godwin and Evans have never gotten on the same page, but 
You know, he is smart. He's going to make the right plays. He did have that nice comeback win against the Falcons, another good wins. Um, I just don't think he fits. I just think Bruce Arians is a really stubborn coach, and I just think they really need to base this system around Brady because he's taking like 10, five deep shots a game, and that's just not who Tom Brady is. I get you have these deep threats, but use them in other ways. So this offense for me is just kind of like boomer bust. They're going to like just throw up the ball 50 yards and see if it works. So that's kind of why I don't have Tampa Bay going down for in the postseason. But I do think it's worked out well enough for the Buccaneers, if that makes sense. Yeah, I get what you're saying. Um, yeah, I initially was a bit surprised that the Bucks went after uh, Tom Brady. I thought they were just going to draft a quarterback or something. But, um, yeah, no, I, I really – Liked this move though. After I thought about it some more, and you know, so far this season, I knew the Bucks got overhyped, especially when they didn't have any off season to work with. Um, but I think so far in year one with no off season, I think they've been all right. Brady has had some mm-hmm. not great games, but he hasn't had any just like complete meltdowns where he doesn't have any touchdown passes, like five interceptions. Well, he um, did have that one, the Saints game, especially the second one. Yeah, but it was more – I mean, he still had good plays there. It was just like th- three bad picks, and that was it. But, yeah, I agree. Against the Saints, he struggled a bit. Uh, I think this is just, you know, year one with a new team, no off season, so they're not going to connect right away. I mean, he had Edelman back in New England for like, what, seven years or something like that, so – I mean, he's probably he's probably very used to throwing to shorter guys. Um, he's also probably not used to – he hasn't thrown to somebody like Mike Evans since Randy Moss was in town, and that's been a while. So, um, I, I don't know if it's I – don't, I don't think this year is their year, but I think next year I think the Bucks will put everything together here. I don't think the offensive scheme is necessarily the issue as much as it is just that they don't have chemistry yet. But, you know – that being said, with as much talent is on that team, they have the potential to just explode if they can put everything together. So um, we'll see if they can do that within the next two weeks. Uh, I don't think they will, but, yeah, I still think I, – I think the Bucks might have a shot at doing well in the postseason just because all the NFC teams are just so unpredictable. It's like all of them are on and off every single week, so except for the Packers, but we'll see. Yeah, so I like what you said about Edelman being shorter and how Brady is used to that. I thought that was a good point. Um, yeah, I think the chemistry is missing. I will say one good thing is Antonio Brown does look a lot better. Um, he's not, you know, making this – he's not making the news for dumb headlines. He's staying intact. It looks like he regressed a bit. Like before, he was a top three wide receiver. Somewhere I could top two. Now he looks like top 12. But, you know, he can still make some nice plays. Um, I don't know about the Bucks this um, postseason. I think the Packers and Saints have been pretty consistent with who they are. The NFC West is where I think the identities get a bit more confused. But I think next year is the big year. I think next year we'll see if this team can put it together. If not, they might be one of the greatest what if in NFL history with all this talent. But um, as, you know, as the season's gone on, like Gronkowski has emerged, so maybe other people will. Um, I don't know if the AB sign was honestly the best move because for me, Brady was playing very well with Scotty Miller, um, and I feel like maybe if they signed AB. They traded like Evans or Godwin or someone like I love the AB signing at first, but since then I don't know if it's worked out the best. To be honest, I thought they were fine with Miller. It was kind of, and then Ronald Jones is a good running back. So I'm like, I thought their offense was good before Brown got there. But um, yeah, I thought they were doing just fine without AB, but I don't, I don't think he's been any of the issues there I think it's I think they would have had the same issues regardless of whether it was him or Scotty Miller but okay. uh, I 
because it's not like Tom is just trying to force it to AB every play. He's the only – I don't – I think his highest, like, catches is, like, what, seven with the Bucks or something. He's not really getting it forced to him that much. Um, I think it's more of just Tom having to get used to throwing, like, fly routes more often to and trusting his receivers too because that's probably not something he's used to either because he hasn't had like a playmaker wide receiver in a really long time so um we had gronkowski but that's different for tight end yeah. safety blank and the patriots and buccaneers schemes are different mm-hmm. the patriots were more take the yards that are there buccaneers are trying to make yards um anyways we'll move on here we did mention the nfc west and we had a big trade with deandre Hans to the cardinals uh, a, you know a plus move and i think a lot of people thought that before we actually saw hopkins play i think hopkins has played better than i thought which you might be saying how is that possible he just has been off the charts he had the week one game against the niners he has had the hail mary catch with the bills he had then fantastic catch with the Eagles against the Eagle Eagles. I just think he's worked so well in there. Um, and it'd been interesting to see if Hopkins wasn't on, you know, if they didn't do the trade, what would have happened? My guess is Arizona probably would have taken a wide receiver in the draft. I don't know if they would have taken one round one, maybe round two, they would have gotten uh, maybe like a Denzel Mims or whoever it may be. So, I think Hopkins has been fantastic. Um, I think it's cool to see him and Fitz on the same team. Um, Because, you know, the past couple of years, we had had the 2015, 16, 14 Cardinals with Carson Palmer and um, Michael Floyd, who was really good, and he kind of got in trouble, and John Brown and Leigh Fitzgerald. And that was a really good trio. But then Fitz has kind of declined a bit. And I think they needed that number one playmaker. And I think Hopkins just fits that so well. He seems to be vibing super well in Arizona. So I think this is one of the best trades. In terms of the Texans, a lot of people are like, hey, David Johnson, you know, he's good. And I was always hesitant. And then he had that week one game against the Chiefs. I'm like, he's back. And then since then, he's been nowhere. This previous week, he had like, I think, 10 catches against the Colts. But David Johnson just looks like he's not himself. I could see him being someone who ends up with, like, being on five different teams before he retires. I think he could retire early. I I don't know. I, I think that injury just really messed him up. So, terrible move by the Texans. But a pretty pretty solid, uh, pretty great one by the Colonels. Yeah, I think the Texans had a lot of just awful decisions made this offseason. Um Trading for an old running back with too much cap space was a terrible move. And Johnson has not been very good there. He's been just kind of eh, below average, which, I mean, part of that is because the Texans' offensive line sucks. They can't do anything, right? Um, and then, uh, yeah, Hopkins, though, with the Cardinals, he's been he's been really good. And I agree with you. I think he's played better than I thought he would with his first year in the team. Um, he just has reestablished himself as the best wide receiver in the league. Um, he has made some exceptional plays. He's a great route runner. He's really opened things up for Cardinals offense. And it, I, I'm sure it's helped Cliff Kingsbury uh, change his play going too. And then, you know, defenses had to, of course, change the entire way that they play the Cardinals this year, it, rather than if they didn't have Hopkins. Um, but yeah, I think, Hopkins and then having uh, Christian Kirk and Larry Fitzgerald is a really good wide receiver trio. Um, and yeah, he's just been, he's been exceptional this year. He definitely deserves that Pro Bowl nod. And I think if the Cardinals do win a playoff game, I think he's going to be a huge part of that win. Yeah, I like the point. The Pro Bowl is stupid, by the way. I, I don't know if yeah. I really want to get into that. No, but let's I not get into that. But I, I will say. I will say this for the Pro Bowl. The wide receivers I made, I did like for the most part. Yeah. Um, so, yeah, you know, it's just been a fantastic move overall. I think that he's also helped, you know, been that new mentor because Fitz is probably going to retire in the next two years, possibly this year. And I feel like if he does, just having Hopkins there will help. 
Uh, Christian Kirk, it's very weird because there's moments where he looks like, yes, he's the next big thing. And then he has moments where I'm like, I don't know. Like the Patriots, he had a drop touchdown, which you need to catch. And he caught earlier in the season those type of catches. So Kirk's a very inconsistent player. Um, Andy Isabella is nice here and there. I feel like if Fitz does retire, they could maybe sign someone um, like cheap who's decent. Like um, maybe like a – isn't Kenny Stills in free agency and no one's picked him up? Like that yeah, would be... I wouldn't pick him up, though. I would just go re-sign uh, Hakeem Butler, who we cut earlier this year. He's oh, really yeah. tall, and I would, I'd rather give him a shot than sign some old veteran who's going to put up like 700 yards and three touchdowns. Yeah, well, that's still better than nothing. Why is Kenny Seals not signed? That shocks me. Like, uh, He wasn't really doing anything with the Texans, and he's just he's old and kind of average as far as receivers go. But a lot of teams could use an average yeah. wide receiver. Yeah, it's just this late in the year, the teams that are need an average wide receiver aren't even in the playoff hunt. So, except well, for the Ravens. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> um, and the Packers. Yeah, maybe. They don't really and seem teams. to want to get Aaron Rodgers any help ever. So, I do want to touch on that real quick. Now, that's someone – a lot of people have said that, like, Thought Rogers' entire career, Rogers has had no help. If you want to talk about the past two seasons, yes, I'll agree with you there. But I mean, in his careers at Jordy Nelson, Randall Cobb, like they've helped him out. I just when people say he's got no help, that's just ridiculous. The past three years, I feel like yeah, they definitely haven't helped him. But yeah, I'm just talking about the new coaching stuff that's there. And all oh that. yeah, yeah. Um, anyways. Uh, moving on to another big wide receiver move, Stefan Bill. <laughs> Stephon Stephon Bills. Bills. <laughs> Stephon Diggs was traded to the Bills. I love this move when it happened. He's been fantastic. Um, you know, obviously him and Josh on the deep ball, beautiful. But what's really to me is a lot of the shorter routes, the intermediate stuff. Um, I've been a big Josh Allen fan. I love the move when it first happened when the Bills took him. Last year, I thought he did pretty well. This year, he's done fantastic, and I think Diggs has happened. Or Diggs has helped so much in those short, medium routes where you can just cut, you know, and I think Allen and Diggs have had fantastic chemistry. Uh, Cole Beasley uh, as well. I mean, this is a fantastic wide receiving core they have in Buffalo. Um, in terms of, you know, what they gave up, they gave up the first-round pick to the Vikings where they took Justin Jefferson as Ben smiles. <laughs> and, um, you know, that's been fantastic. I mean, it's really hard to say who won this Bills Vikings trade because I think both teams won. Yeah, I'd say it's about even. I think they both, uh, both benefited greatly from it. Yeah, they did. Um, you know, Vikings got a young wide receiver. Bills got Stefan Diggs who, I'm glad he made the Pro Bowl. Um, he's been deserving of one for a long time, and I'm glad people finally, um, like, hey, you know, we should probably get this guy in. So, yeah, I just love the move for both sides. Um, I think that the Bills are just a team. I, I, I always had them going to the Super Bowl, and I think now more than ever we can see that with this offense, so. Really fantastic move by both sides. Justin Jefferson also looks way better than expected. I expected him to be <laughs> as, um, you know, I expect him to be good, but he's been fantastic. So, Ben, I'll let you take it from here. Yeah, so, you know, as a as a Vikings fan, seeing that uh, that news come in was, oh, it was pretty rough. I have a, I have a Vikings post in here that's got, Adam Thielen, Stephon Diggs, Dalvin Cook, Everson Griffin, Xavier Rhodes, and Kirk Cousins on it. Three of those dudes are not even on the team anymore. Um, and seeing Stephon Diggs leave the team in the offseason, and I know he wasn't happy, but he still had a good year. And, you know, I thought the year got better as it went on. And then, I don't know. I don't know why he was so upset with being with the Vikings, probably because they're a run-first team. But... Um, you know, so initially I was kind of 
I had mixed feelings about him getting traded. I was like, well, at least we don't have a locker room cancer growing in there, and at least he's out of there and happy. Um, the Bills, it's paid off great for them. They had a good receiving quarter last year. It's even better this year with Stephon Diggs. It just took them to the next level. Really helped Josh Allen out. Um, he just took some big step forwards this year too. Um, and then the Vikings got a first-round pick, took Justin Jefferson. Seems like Stephon Diggs never really left. Uh yeah, I mean, I'd say both teams won. It's almost like the Bills just kind of got a wide receiver out of nowhere, and then the Vikings just replaced Stephon Diggs, and, you know, now they're both in the Pro Bowl. So I think that says a lot about how the trade went for each team. Uh, yeah, so, I mean, I'm I'm really happy with Justin Jefferson because he's younger than Stephon Diggs, you know, wants to be there, and, uh, well, he's about to break uh, Randy Moss's rookie record so that's exciting yeah i'm glad that both of them made the popular ball i think that's a good sign um for each organization uh that's what we're calling it now um at, anyways um Let's just call it the uh the nfl yearbook <laughs> yearbook awards <laughs> um I mean, seriously, where's DeForest Buckner? How does Clay's Campbell make it as a Ravens fan? He was out like half of the year, but uh, we'll, we'll move on. Um, I think it's I think between the Diggs and Hopkins move, I think the Diggs move has been better for Buffalo. I think that Diggs going to Buffalo has helped Josh Allen more more than like I feel like from this year from past years. Josh Allen's taken a huge step. Kyle Murray from last year to this year has been better, but he still has some mental errors. And I get it, he's young. But I think Allen has been in fair more than from Diggs. Um, I also think Diggs has opened up some of the playmakers more in the Bills. But, I mean, both have been fantastic moves. And then, like you said, Justin Jefferson looks really good. Um, looks like the Vikings might lose another OC, which I would – Fear, uh, feel bad for you. Who's their offensive coordinator right now? Gary Kubiak. Oh, yeah. He's not even a head coaching candidate this year. Oh, he's not? I haven't heard anybody say they're going to go hire him. And I would be – I'd be pretty upset if he left because Kirk Cousins has never had an offensive coordinator for more than one year, and that's so upsetting. And then people wonder why the teams with Kirk Cousins on them can't win. It's because Kirk makes the offensive coordinators look too good. Like <laughs> that, that, and the rest of the team, of course. But I, yeah, well, I won't get into the Kirk Cousins thing, but I'd be very upset at Gary Kubiak if he decided to leave. Yeah, um, that, that's a good point going into coaches here. Let's talk about some coaching moves that happened this offseason. I know there's other big trades, but I mean, the Forrest Buckner has been fantastic with the Colts, same with Xavier Rhodes. Yeah. Jimmy Graham to the Bears has been huge. Mm -hmm. Melvin Gordon to the Broncos. I liked it, but yikes. Um, Xavier, how, yeah, no, Byron Jones to the Dolphins. He's been that's good. Been, that's been huge. That's been good. Um, there's probably some others we're missing, but overall, uh, Chris Harris to the Chargers. I don't think I don't, that's helped them that much. He that had a pick. Still sucks. He had a pick against the Raiders, which was yeah. nice. I don't um, think it's necessarily his fault. The Chargers just never yeah. put everything together. Like they're like yeah. the Bucks every year, but even worse. <laughs> Um, for the Ravens, Yannick Ngakwe's been nice. Clay's Campbell's been hurt. Des Bryant had a nice touchdown. Nice to see him put up the X. Um, I I'm trying to think if there's any other big moves we're missing. Yeah, that Jimmy Graham signing was nice for Chicago. Oh, the Nick Foles trade. That um, was a disaster. Uh, goodbye, whatever picks they gave away. Well, I wonder if maybe Trubisky learned some stuff under Foles. Because now he looks nice. But we'll get to that. Well, yeah, we'll talk about that when we get there. Um, we're talking about some head coaching hires. I think all of them have been good, except Mike McCarthy. Um, talking about Ron Revere to Washington, I like that move. Now I love it. I think mm -hmm. he's really helped the culture there. And I think Washington is turning a corner. You know, um, Joe Judge to the Giants. I like the move. Um, the Giants, I mean, I think there's just their offense is the issue, but their defense and special teams with what Joe Judge came into has been great. Uh, 
talking about Kevin Stefanski to Cleveland, that has been a fantastic move, better than I expected. Um, I thought that, okay, yeah, they're probably going to win eight games this year, but he's really changed the culture and attitude, which I just didn't expect. And then uh, Mike McCarthy to the Cowboys has just been ugh. But, uh, Ben, do you have anything to say about the head coaching moves made? Um, yeah, I agree. Really, I don't even know if McCarthy – He's a year you can – I don't think he's done all that well either, but I know he's had a ton of injuries to deal with. So That's true. I would give him at least another year. But I think all the other head coaching candidates have done great. I, all those teams have done better than I thought, except for maybe Carolina. But that's more of the players they have there and not so much the coaching. They've been in some close games that I didn't think they would be in, and they've mm-hmm. won some games that I didn't think they were going to win in <coughs> Cardinals. Um, but, yeah. Uh, it's the Matt Rule and uh, Ron Rivera, Joe Judge. Those guys have all way surpassed my expectations. Yeah. Um, Matt Rule, I just feel like I say this every week, but it's true. The Panthers are a young team. Sometimes they win. Sometimes they don't. And there's been some times with Matt Rule, I'm like, what are you doing with the play calling? He's very aggressive. But sometimes, I like the culture there. He reminds me a lot of Doug Peterson in some ways. Very risky, but builds the culture. Now, if Doug Peterson, the first couple of years, it worked out. Eagles won a Super Bowl, but now we're seeing the repercussions. So, Matt Rule, be interesting to see where he goes. Um, ben, I do want to touch on this real quick. What coaches do you think could get um, fired this offseason? Um, well, as much as I would like to see Adam Gase fired, he's not going to be, which is it sucks. What do you mean he's not? Well, I mean, the – Owner already said he's part of the plans for the future, so he's not getting fired. Yeah, he said that a few weeks ago. Oh, um, that was before they fired their GM or something like that. Or the defensive coordinator, or the yeah, the defensive coordinator, which I honestly, yeah, that. Well, what if he means they just promote him to like offensive coordinator or bring in the coach? I mean, sure, you can do that, that would be fine, I guess. Um, but, yeah, it doesn't sound like he's getting fired, even though he should be. The Jets organization is an absolute disaster. Um, I think Anthony Lynn will probably be fired. The Chargers have lost a lot of close games, and some of that is missed kicks, which isn't really that much his fault. Um, but they have struggled to keep leads this season, mm-hmm. and typically they've just struggled to win close games. Now they can't keep a lead on teams. And I think – Can we just talk about how perfect that Falcons-Chargers game was like two weeks ago? I don't know if you saw it, but, yeah, they kept, like, changing leads in, like, the final two minutes. Like, it, <laughs> Yeah, that was a good game. The ball, the ball okay. over. Yeah. Um, uh, yeah, I think Anthony Lynn is probably going to get fired. He just hasn't been able to put it together with a lot of good players. He has had no shortage of talent on that team, and they – have been to the playoffs once. Um, yeah, he's been really disappointing. I thought he was going to be a lot better. Um, what other coaches? Matt Nagy from the Bears. I I can see the Bears just completely resetting and mm-hmm. rebuilding. Uh, the Lions coach already got fired. Uh, we could go division by division. So NFC North, I could maybe see Nagy. That's a toss-up. I think Zimmer's fine. He He's really impressed me recently. Matt before is fine. Lions fired theirs. NFC East, McCarthy, they said they're safe. Doug Peterson, we'll see how these final two see. games go. NFC South, I think everything everyone's fine. Yeah, I think everyone's going to be fine there. It's more about who the Falcons hire. They, don't, mm-hmm. they already fired their head coach. Um, um, and in the NFC West, I think everyone's good. Um, yeah. I will say this. I will say this. If the Cardinals miss out on the playoffs this year, and if they're really doing bad next year, I could see Cliff Kingsbury gone, to be honest. I think – Didn't they already clinch a playoff spot? No. What's their record right now? They have like eight – or they have they eight, eight six. wins. Yeah, but both – Yeah, the they're Bears probably going to make it. The Bears and the Vikings are not competitive enough to get there. Yeah, well, the Bears and Vikings each have seven wins. No, the so, Vikings have six. They're not 
Oh, yeah, that's true. The Bears okay. have seven. They're the only other team that could even get there, and they're not going to. They're not good enough. Well, they have the Jaguars next, so they could win that one. And in the Week 17 game, which I think is the Packers, they'll probably lose. The Cardinals have – the thing about the Cardinals is they have two division games, which they kind of struggle with. But I don't know. We'll see. Definitely interesting. Well, not the Niners. They don't struggle with the Niners. That's true. They've, they've um, handled the Niners pretty well since Murray's been in town. Yeah, they were close last year. Anyways, AFC West, you mentioned Anthony Lynn. I, I love Anthony Lynn as a head coach, but I th- just think it's time for him to go. I can see Vic Fangio being gone. I've just been so unimpressed with Vic Fangio. He's just uh, – he's – he seems like a great guy, but he's supposed to be this defensive guy, and I just – here's here's my thing. When you're, you're supposed to make things happen, even when you have – when you have setbacks, and this past offseason when with Von Miller being out, I was expecting him to be like, okay, we have a big guy out, but here's how we're going to do well. I just am not seeing that. And I think he's not the head coach to build around the young quarterback in Drew Locke. I think he's a good coordinator. I could see him going to a team like the Falcons, the Jets, the Lions, the Chargers, where they really need just a culture guy defensively. But as a head coach, no. Um, AFC North, I could see Zach Taylor being gone. He has, he, uh, it's very interesting because. Uh... I don't um, know. The <laughs> Bengals owner is super patient. I don't think he's going to be fired, especially not after all the success Burroughs had. You know, they, they just need to true. do some more moves in the offseason instead of just going after, like, the third and fourth Vikings corners. <laughs> I don't know what that was, but uh-huh. – Yeah, um, everyone else is fine. AFC East, I, Gase, well, I, I don't know. I think we'll, we'll see – he everyone, be fired. everyone else is fine. And AFC South Texans fired theirs. Doug Marone, I think, will be gone. Mm-hmm. Um, I don't know why he isn't already. He seems like a great guy, but he just the success has ran out. So I don't wish for anyone to be fired, but it seems like that there should be some moves that should be made. Um, moving on, Ben. Let's talk. Let's talk about Mitchell Trubisky. Um, so here's my thing about Mitchell Trubisky. I have a lot to say, but I'm going to try to condense it. So he's been playing great the past couple of weeks. Um, Two weeks. and huh? Two weeks. Okay. Uh, three weeks. Um, Texans, Lions, Vikings. Oh, um, I thought it was two. Um, oh yeah. Okay. Anyways, he's been playing great and a lot of people are like, they should sign him. And I'm like, whoa, 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 no. Because last year, if you remember, Trubisky had a really nice game against the Cowboys. Trubisky, at moments, plays really great. He plays really high. And then he's not that good. And for me, that is the perfect definition for a backup quarterback. I think Mitchell Trubisky would be the perfect backup quarterback in this league. couple of reasons. First of all, he seems like a great guy. Say what you will about his play style, but if you watch him in interviews, he conducts himself really well. And I think that's something teams would like to have. Second of all, he has some great talents with him. He's mobile, athletic, and if you look at a lot of the superstar quarterbacks in this league, Russell Wilson, Mahomes, Rogers, Watson, Murray, Allen, I could go on and on, Jackson, all mobile. And so is Trubisky. And third of all, he's very young. So what I'm saying is, I think he's the perfect backup quarterback. I think he should go to one of those teams that has a mobile quarterback, back them up, and if that you know, team's superstar quarterback goes down, Trubisky comes in, he might play well, he might not. You feel like a lot of the reasons Nick Foles, Ryan Fitzpatrick, um, um, Brian Hoyer, a lot of these backup quarterbacks were successful this past decade is that was the era of pocket passes with Brady, Manning, Breeze. Um, there were some exceptions, but, you know, a lot of the backups back then were pocket passes to reflect the era. And I think Chubisky would be the perfect backup quarterback 
I think it would be foolish if the Bears gave him a contract. I think that would be a really bad idea. I just say, you know, Trubisky go to another team. He backs a team up. Who, you know, and that's just kind of, I think that would be the perfect plan. And I think the Bears go somewhere else, sign a Mariota or Winston or whoever. Yeah, I I can see them maybe offering him a backup quarterback contract. But, I mean, yeah, like you said, I could totally see him doing something like Fitzpatrick or McCown and just being a, a journeyman here and there and occasionally getting, like, a year to start uh, mm-hmm. just as a bridge quarterback. But, yeah, trying to make him your franchise dude has clearly not worked. I mean, the Bears have had really good rosters, and they've gone, like, 9-7, and seven, and then – barely lose a game it, they're just I don't know they need a better quarterback and I mean Trubisky's clearly shown his flaws as a quarterback a lot on the field he's not really he struggles with consistency a lot but he does have games like the past three weeks and it's like it makes you upset you're like okay well why can't you do this every week well it doesn't make me upset because I'm a Vikings fan so <laughs> I, I drink Bears fans tears for breakfast but um yeah, if they if they do decide to re-sign him and keep him for like five years, like they did with Cutler, you know, hey, it's five more years. We don't have to worry about the Bears, so that's great. Um, but yeah, I don't think they'll do that. Um, the Bears would probably be better off with Jay Cutler right now, anyways. Uh, I think I could maybe see them going after. Well, I mean, it depends on who the coach is this year, you know. If they go get a new head coach, I really don't know who the quarterback might be. But I might see, like, if Nagy's the coach, they could trade for Carson Wentz, I think. <laughs> That'd be funny, having Mitchell oh. Trubisky, Nick Foles, and Carson Wentz all on the same team. <laughs> <laughs> Sounds like a joke if you had a Carson Wentz, Mitchell Trubisky, and Nick Foles. On one. Oh, Foles and – oh, that would – oh. That'd be kind of awkward. Hey, man. You come from Philly, too? Yeah. <laughs> they didn't want me either. <laughs> <laughs> oh, no. Jalen Hurts um, ends up there in like three or four years. Hey, guys. Um, yeah, that, that's an interesting thing to say. Um, Wentz to the Bears. That's oh, – I, I feel like um, – I, like I don't think Wentz is going to go to the Colts because I feel like it's too obvious everyone thinks that. Well, they still have Rivers on contract for another year, too. So mm-hmm. unless he, like, retires, which I don't think he's going to do because he seems really stubborn, <laughs> it wouldn't make any sense to trade for two super expensive quarterbacks. I don't even know if they have the cap space to do that because Wentz yeah. is way more expensive than Rivers is. And plus they have a quarterback guy, Jake some- someone, not long, not from, what is it? The young uh, quarterback, Jake something. I, I have no idea. <laughs> um, they drafted a qu- – Jacob Eason. There we go. Yeah, they drafted um, him I this past – I don't know who that is. He, he has, like, a strong arm. Um, Wasn't he, like, uh, a seventh-round draft pick? He was, like, third. So, I don't know. Yeah, that's not a franchise. It's quarter. <laughs> well, there. I, I just don't know if they'll trade for Wentz if they weren't trying to build him up. But, anyways, moving on with that, um, that would be really in- – I could see that, Ben, actually. Because, like, that, interesting. Nagy and Peterson both come from the same coaching tree of the Chiefs. Yeah. Um, he's looking at teams. I'm just trying to think. Um, maybe, like, the Jets or Jaguars, if they want to use that one or two pick on, like, Penny Sue or a wide receiver or trade it away. But then that wouldn't make sense the more I think about it. Um, maybe, maybe the Falcons. I don't know though. He's like, what do nah, you? Do? No, no, that doesn't make any sense at all. I don't know. I'm just throwing teams out there. Why would you I, downgrade your quarterback for like a more expensive? Not if Matt Ryan, Matt Ryan, like, I don't know. Maybe if he, he retires, yeah. but I don't think Matt Ryan's gonna retire this year. Well, I that wouldn't shock me. If, I don't want him to. That wouldn't shock. I don't. Me. Yeah, no, I don't want him to either. But. I don't know. There's just older dudes playing, so I guess that would kind of catch me off guard if he retired before, like, Ben Roethlisberger and Phillip Rivers. But, like, if if one of those two retired, I could see either of those teams trading for him because the Steelers and the Colts are both going to have low first-round draft picks. So the good quarterbacks really aren't going to be there. 
Um, yeah, Big Ben said he's planning on returning another year, which I don't know how I feel. I, <laughs> Dude, just hang it up. Maybe the Saints. I don't know, but I could see a, like a sleeper team that like the Niners, maybe because I don't know. What's I going think on. the Niners are going to go after Stafford, which I would oh. much appreciate. That would be great. Oh, that would be. Oh, that, I don't. Not Matthew Stafford. I think Matthew Stafford's going to stay. Being honest, I would. As a Vikings fan, I feel so bad for him. Like, oh, the things I would have done to have Stafford on our team in the Christian Ponder days. Oh. (laughs) (laughs) Goodness. I can't even believe that dude started. Um, (sighs) Yikes. Um, Yeah, it's – wait, Stafford a free agent this offseason? No, you'd have to trade for him. Okay, that's what I thought. He's not a free agent until like 2022 or something like that. I don't know, I could see a trade happening. I think a big quarterback move will happen. Uh, this is going to be an interesting free agency. Juju Smith Schuster, Allen Robinson um, are going to be free agents. Marvin Jones? Marvin. I think the Patriots would. Uh, Marvin Jones seemed. I, I saw him like. Someone mocked him going to the Patriots in a trade. And that just seems like such a Patriots move to make. It does. Can I mean, we all? He's a big, like jump ball guy but he's a lot older too i don't know if he would solve all their problems on offense he would help them can we just talk about how much of a bust Nikhil harry's been i feel so yeah dude he has not panned out the way i thought he was i'm so glad the patriots took him too because i thought the cardinals Mm -hmm. were going to take him like the pick after that and that would have been a disaster yeah i remember cardinals fans were really upset that the patriots took Nikhil harry and one of my because he was from asu so it would have been like ah hometown yeah and he would have sucked and that would have been really disappointing (laughs) one of my friends kevin you know kevin yeah he's like i want he's like i wonder if the pats took Nikhil harry so that way they could get rosen anyways i just feel bad for Nikhil harry the patriots as a whole have just been really underwhelming cam newton's played really bad Dude, um, he is the worst touchdown to interception ratio by a lot this year. I just okay. So if you talk about the bad quarterbacks, it's like Wentz, Newton, Darnold. We'll take Sam Darnold now because he's on the Jets, who yeah. won a game. Oh my goodness, I feel so <sighs> bad for Rams fans. Sam Darnold is just laughing right now. <laughs> um, you know, at least with Wentz, you know he has a ton of issues, and we've discussed this already, but. At least he made some plays on his feet. I'm just not seeing Cam doing that. I wonder why the Patriots are not doing that. Anyways, it's interesting to say the least. Um, yeah, um, I hope the Vikings beat the Saints this week, Ben. Yeah, aren't they playing on Christmas? Yeah. Yeah, this, well, Merry Christmas, Saints fans. Yeah, this. I think this will. This video will be uploaded on Christmas. So Merry Christmas, everyone, or if Christmas already passed. Uh, Merry Christmas. Hope you had a nice day to have. But, Ben, you're in the fantasy championship, right, in our league? Yeah, I uh, really did not see that coming. But, you know, the Raiders happened to put up a lot of points. So, Darren Waller, he had like 30 points this week. Oh, yeah. Yeah, that was huge. I ended up – I was behind uh, Kevin by like 40 points and ended up passing him by like 30 or 40 points. Yeah, because uh, you my said my team put up like almost two hundred points this week. Oh my gosh! Yeah, because in the yeah, John's like good luck. I'm like to you. I'm like I thought you lost to Kevin, and I checked back, and you won by like thirty points. I'm I like, know, where dude. Did that come from? Yeah, I what quarterback did I start? Allen had thirty seven points this week. <laughs> what? What even? Uh, like, he was against the Broncos, injured secondary. <sighs> I know. I'm, I'm having a tough time. I'm picking between Kyler and Allen this week. Like, Kyler's playing against the Niners, who are starting their third-string quarterback, so he's probably going to be on the field a lot. But the oh, Niners Josh have a good Rosen's defense. Starting? No, no. Oh, is. oh. That would have been no. kind of funny, though. Hey, if Beathard gets hurt, though, Rosen's going to be in, which would be kind of cool. The revenge um, game. <laughs> it's not going to That's not going to be pretty for the Niners. Um, <laughs> and then um, – uh, what else? What was I gonna say? Allen, I think plays the plays Patriots. New England this weekend, but they just lost to Font Gilmore, so it's like, oh, do I, I? I don't know who to start. I wish you could start them both, but I can't do that. So I would go. Um, 
Kyler, because you never know if Bill Belichick. Bill Belichick likes to get sneaky. That's what I'm thinking too. And even though they lost Stephon Gilmore, they still might be, they still might be really good. Plus, Kyler's first in fantasy points. Allen's third. You have well, you have J.C. Jackson in New England. Seven interceptions yeah. doesn't make the Pro Bowl, anyways. Oh, we're not gonna talk about that. Yeah, but even so, he's still like he's not. He's not covering the number one receiver. He's covering the number two, and now he's gonna have to cover the number one. So we'll see if he can do that. But true, JC, well, JC and Stephon Diggs. I'm on. I really have to think about this. Yeah, but John's team is loaded because he got DK. Dude, like that. I I don't know how I'm gonna win. He's he has so many studs. <laughs> like I've got some good studs, but I have like one or two guys that I have to start that are just kind of eh. All his entire team is just good. I, I don't know how I'm gonna. I don't know how I'm gonna beat him. Well, good luck. Um, yeah, fantasy for me, I do it in my uh, prediction uh, videos. But, you know, I'm happy with how I did. Um, I just have a lot of young guys. So I, I had trouble with running backs. I was good in wide receivers, but my running backs. Should have taken my Aaron Jones trade earlier in the year, man. <laughs> Didn't I have Dalvin Cook? You did, yeah. I was trying to give you Aaron Jones for Dalvin Cook. Well, Cook's been way back. I'm yeah, from other no, ones. yeah, you're right. Never mind. Uh wasn't I trying to give you Jacobs, too? I thought I was trying to give you two mm. of my running backs. I was trying to give you Kenyon Drake, too. Because um, I didn't want either of them. So I was like, oh, I have Josh Jacobs. Yeah. yeah. That would have been a disaster. Because he had, like, two games where he had, like, less than five points. Yeah, he's very inconsistent. But anyway. Well, he's not inconsistent. He's usually pretty good. It's just occasionally mm-hmm. the Raiders just get completely shut down. Like, against the Falcons, like, he could not oh. run anywhere. Like, they could not create a hole for him to run. But yeah. most of the time, he pops off. He's got like 20, 25 points. Yeah, but anyways, everyone, thank you for watching. Uh, the feedback's been really good recently. We've uh, done well. I know uh, people have requested to do them shorter, so we tried. We're also going to be getting some special guests on here in the next couple of weeks, some new people on. Um, now that we're both on break, we're going to probably be trying to do these maybe twice a week, hopefully. I know that's a big ambition, but I think as the season is wrapping up, that, that'll, be try, uh, that'll be good to do. But see you all next time. Uh, ben, thanks for joining me. It was a pleasure, dude. Some entertainment doing love. Take care and have a good one.